that day will come on come on come on let's say that day will come every time that day will surely come tell your neighbor surely because we've been waiting for certain things to happen in our life but then it gets delayed and the more we wait it doesn't seem like happening at all at a point of time we come to our life and we conclude okay this is my fate and i think it's not going to happen at all all right and to top it over when we want it to happen it actually gets worse than getting better and there's a certain point of time we want to give up in life and like lord this is not going to happen let me give up but today this morning is said the lord is saying that day will come in your life amen hallelujah we probably will have to go through the worst i tell you we'll have to probably go through the worst because through this worst the lord will take us to his best amen he will take us to his best so don't give up trying don't give up trusting because the appointed day which the lord has in our life that day of promotion that day of success that day of healing that day of miracle that day of deliverance will definitely come in our life that day will surely come come on say an amen amen, amen. guys i think that day will come for me but not for many of you because you don't believe come on lift your hands and say that day will come that day will definitely come all right i'll tell you see when we start few things in life this is how we are all right we are sharp we begin the pencil is new all right but this is yesterday but then what we go through in life in fact breaks us into two all right in fact people break us into two and people break our confidence people break our faith people break our break our belief and they think it's over but you know what god does even when we are broken god keeps still working in our life and when people think that they've broken us in fact they think they've made us into two pieces but then now we could be used in two places now in fact when they think they think they they can break us but in fact they've made us into two they made us double our strength has become double our blessing has become double in fact god will not just use us in one place more the people break us he will start using us in more places come on guys so if you're broken today your tomorrow probably was good but today is bad but tomorrow i'll tell you your yesterday was good today is bad but your tomorrow is going to be great amen do you believe that let's go into genesis chapter 17 now last week when we looked at this verse when abraham obeyed that he will get circumcised the lord told him you know what don't think i'm going to just bless ismail i'm going to bless you i'm going to give you a son sara will have a child okay this is what god told him all right my first point for today is no matter how much people laugh god will have the final laughter all right there are times when god tells us something and no people laugh when they hear it at times we also laugh because lord you know about me lord do you think this is ever possible because whenever my mom kept telling me that i'm going to become a pastor one day leave alone others laughing i laughed the most because it was totally unbelievable i said me becoming a pastor can you even imagine that i can't imagine that and lydia was there when my mom kept telling me this all right nobody could ever imagine in fact i laughed and the entire world laughed in fact i laughed very badly but then today my god is having the final laughter in my life amen hallelujah he's probably looking at me from heaven and he's like you know i know how it will all turn out you could have laughed because that's what happened when god told abraham sara is going to have a child genesis chapter 17 verse 17 says the passion version says all right the tpd the passion version says then abraham laughed so hard that he fell to the ground saying to himself how in the world can a 100 year old man become a father how can my wife sara get pregnant at 19 in tamil they say no vidindu vidindu sister he fell on the ground and he laughed because he could not believe that he also tried telling god god you know what then he spoke out loud 18th verse and he said and then he spoke out loud and said oh god that probably you might bless ismail with your blessing it's like telling god god you know what i don't want to give you this tough job having isaac is going to be tough you know so what you do is instead of giving me isaac i'll give you an option lot probably you bless ismail all right how many times have we done this with god we tell god god you know what this is tough lot even though plan a is not working lot why don't we go with plan b lot i'm still okay lot all right i tried america it didn't work then i tried australia it didn't work lord what about dubai at least middle east lord all right if not dubai what we we'll do is lord if not chennai at least bombay lord bombay is a foreign country right now 
right? We start giving God options because we think God, it's not possible. You know what? We've been waiting for a long time and this guy says, I am 100, she is 90. Lord, you know the truth. This is not going to happen. And then he says, why not Ismail? But God says, you know what? God says, boss, listen to me. The Passion Version says, listen to me. I promise that you and Sarah will have a son. You will call him Isaac. I will confirm my everlasting covenant of love with him and see. Isaac means not just laughter. Isaac means he laughs. All right. Historians, theologians say it also meant that God laughs. He laughs. Probably God meant Abraham laughs. He laughs. Or probably he says, Isaac, no matter who laughs, I want to tell you this morning, my God will have the final laughter in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. He will have the final laughter. He will smile. He will laugh when people laugh at us. Fast forward. Chapter 18. Now, Abraham, God told this to Abraham. Then this guy got circumcised. Ishmael got circumcised. All that happened. 18th chapter. The Lord appeared again to Abraham. First verse 1 and 2. Near the oak tree belonging to Mamre. One day, Abraham was sitting there at the entrance to his tent during the hottest part of the day. He looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. When he saw, he ran to them, met them, welcomed them, bowing loud to the ground. All right. There's this world called theophany. All right. Theophany means before Christ came into this world in human form, all right, before he came and he was born as Jesus, Christ appeared in human forms to talk to people. It's called theophany. Okay, it was either human form or it was a majestic glory, the form of majestic glory which happened in the book of Ezekiel. Otherwise, whenever he spoke to Abraham and men came and spoke to Abraham, the word of God said, Lord spoke, Lord spoke. So the Lord spoke in human form to people. That was the Old Testament. So as soon as they came, Abraham runs to his wife and he says, you know what, come on, make some chili beef. All right, some mutton kofta, something, you know, no, God's come, you know, God's come, make some butter naan, chapati, fulka, whatever, you know, we, let's, let's, let's feed them. So Sarah prepares all of them and 8 verse 8 to 10. When the food was ready, Abraham took some yogurt, milk and roasted meat, served it to these men. As they ate, Abraham waited on them in the shade of the trees. Where is Sarah, your wife? They asked. She's inside the tent, Abraham replied. And one of them said, I will return to you this time next year, to you and your wife. Come on, say this time next year. Come on, say this time next year. All right, and he said, Sarah will have a son. All right, how many of you guys believe that this time next year, we will have a miracle? Amen, do you guys believe this time next year? Okay, now come on, let me test your faith more. How many of you guys believe that this time next month, we will have a miracle? Okay. Another 15, okay. How many of you guys will have some crazy faith believing with me that this time, tomorrow, God will do a miracle for us? Amen. Hallelujah. This time, not next year, not next month. If you believe this time, tomorrow, or this time, even the next minute, my God can do this for you. Hallelujah. My God can do this for you. And when one of them said this, that this will happen to you, Sarah was listening to this conversation. And Abraham and Sarah were both, and Sarah had long passed the age of having a child. So Sarah laughed silently. All right? Abraham laughed, but he fell on the ground and laughed. Sarah laughed silently. See, women do this, the wives do this. When husbands say something, the wives laugh. That's a different story. We are used to it. You don't take us serious most of the times. But then these are angels. These are, this is the Lord himself saying something. And... The anointing remains the same. Sarah laughs. <laughs> right? She laughs to herself silently. Because she feels, Lord, how is this possible? Right? Last chapter, Abraham laughs. Then this chapter, Sarah laughs. And God said, why is she laughing? She will have a child. And you will name him Isaac. In fact, the very reason God named him Isaac, because he said, these guys are all laughing here. But you know what? I will have the final laughter in your life. Because when I told you that this is going to happen in your life, you did not have the faith to believe. People around you did not believe. And that's why every time you see Isaac, you guys will remember that you guys laughed in disbelief. And finally, right now, look who's laughing in your life. I am laughing in your life and your son, whom you never believed is right now, alive in your life and he's laughing. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you this morning, there are going to be some miracles in our life which is going to laugh at us. Right? Every time this miracle is going to laugh at us and remind us, boss, you never believed in God, but look what happened. A second point for you today. Say, this is important. Come on, say, this is important. Tell your neighbor, this is very important for you. 
Okay, I'll tell you why. Don't allow what you don't understand to stop you from receiving what you don't understand. Okay, let me repeat this way. Don't allow what you understand, okay, to stop you from receiving what you don't understand. Quite often when we talk to people, people say this, no, I understand. All right, whenever you say something, they're like, whether they understand or not, they will say, I understand. I know what you're going through. You tell them your problem, they're like, I understand. When people come to me for counseling, I tell them something, they're like, Pastor, we understand, Pastor. If you understand, why the hell did you come to me? All right? It's like we understand. We understand. We understand. Whenever people say I understand, you can firmly believe that they understand nothing. All right? Quite often, what we understand stops us from receiving what we don't understand because miracle is something we don't understand. It's beyond our logic. Right? What we understand is the facts. I tell you why. Genesis chapter 18, verse 11 and 12. Abraham and Sarah both were very old by this time. Sarah was long past the age of having children. All right, the other version says she was long past the age of having her periods. Her cycle had stopped. So Sarah comes to a point where she says, Lord, I understand that I've crossed that stage. How many of you have told this? Lord, I've crossed that stage. Right? I've crossed that stage, Lord. No more can I do this. I've crossed, I cannot, I cannot do this again. I've crossed that stage, Lord. When people call you to know, probably when they call you to play for something, join any sport, we're like, oh my God, no, yeah. Those days have gone. I used to be the opening batsman, I used to be the opening bowler, I used to be the fielder, I used to be the umpire, I used to do everything. But those days have gone. Right? Those days have gone. Right? I can't run anymore because I have back pain. Those days have gone. I can't do this anymore. Because we feel we've crossed that stage. That's what Sarah is telling. Lord, I understand everything. Lord, you need to understand that this guy is 99. I am 89. All right? And right now, I've crossed that stage where my cycle has stopped. So hence, if my cycle has stopped, which means there's no chance I can have a child. I've crossed that stage. We as believers, we say this quite often, that Lord, gone past. All right? Women and men who are still not married are like 28, 29, 30. They talk to me, Pastor, I'm going to be single, Pastor, because I've crossed that stage, Pastor. I've seen it all, Pastor. All right? Oh, I had uh, the, my fair share of you know, being in relationships. I've seen it all. I've crossed that stage. I'm going to live like this, Pastor. All right? People say, Pastor, no, I've crossed that stage. I cannot study anymore. One of our leaders who was in Hyderabad, he's a retired pilot instructor. He's some 60 plus. All right? Saturday, Sundays, he's always very busy because he's doing a management course in IAM right now. All right? Indian Institute of Management, he's doing a management course after getting retired. All right? If we were there, we like, what am I going to do after my retirement? Now learning leadership and management. No. You've not crossed that stage. Tell your neighbor, you've not crossed that stage. All right? So don't ever think those days are gone. That's what Sarah says because she's looking at the flag. She, she says, Lord, I understand that I've crossed that stage. She laughed silently to herself and said, how could, come on, listen to this very carefully. How could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure? All right? Especially when my master, my husband is also old. See, one thing we need to appreciate about Sarah. Okay? She calls herself a worn out woman and then calls her husband, master. Women, you need to probably... In Tamil, you know, it's so, in Tamil, she says, Naan ore karavi, but in Andavar, she says, I'm an old woman, but my Lord. <laughs> Leave it out now. She's also saying, can a worn out woman like me enjoy such a pleasure? She's talking about the physical relationship. But then, I want you to focus on these sentence, this, these words. A worn out woman, I'm worn out in life. I'm just tired. I've lost everything. I've lost my energy. Can I have this pleasure, this enjoyment in my life again? Right? Because today when I talk to couples or when people are across a certain age, they're like, Pastor, I don't think I can enjoy this. I don't enjoy doing this anymore. After you get married, you have children. They're like, we're like, I have to live for my children and get them married and die. I don't think I'll be able to enjoy life. That's what she's saying. I don't think I'll be able to enjoy this anymore. I've lost the joy. Right? She says, I understand this, Lord. Dear children of God, it's very important, don't allow what you understand to stop you from the things which God is going to do, which you will not understand at all. 
because the more you say i understand the facts i understand logic i understand how it works i have the experience i have the knowledge i've seen it all done it all you're going to stop god from giving you certain miracles which you don't understand at all you might say lord i don't understand lord i understand this but i don't understand how you're going to do but i still believe you will do it for me amen hallelujah come on say lord amen guys she is like she is looking at reality how will i ever enjoy when people say it's crazy it's too easy for the lord hallelujah she is telling the lord in fact she is calling god crazy she is saying boss those days are gone boss i've crossed the stage i cannot have a child now she is saying how can i enjoy this pleasure guys your days of going on vacation is not gone yet you will have some international vacations you will enjoy life amen hallelujah so i still remember we got married when lydia and i we got married all right and uh, so ours was a love marriage so today when you ask people no yesterday i was having a conversation with this guy so he says like uh, uh, ours is a love come arranged now it's are love come arranged was i tell you be very frank tell me it's love marriage or arranged marriage it's love come arranged I told them, did we all run away and get married? Us also were arranged. We also had a wedding planner. It happened in an auditorium. We also had cake cutting. Everything was there. All right. We didn't buy cake from another bakery and eat a piece. So us also was arranged. No. So when we got married, all right, we were going through some financial struggle. I was again studying, and so we never had money. So the money which we got as gifts also, we used to pay the fees. So we never had money to go for any what. honeymoon all right okay so honeymoon no vacation nothing so everybody you know after you get married you know what people ask where did you go for your honeymoon where did you go for your honeymoon we didn't go boss we didn't have the money we didn't go all right but everybody said you missed the opportunity you didn't go for honeymoon boss we married for 21 years if you had got married and saved money or borrowed money and gone for honeymoon to some location you would have gone probably to one place it's 21 years and still throughout the year we are traveling to all different locations god still taking us on honeymoon even after 21 years we are still going to places god's blessing us amen the honeymoon doesn't stop hallelujah as long as there is honey in the rock and there's moon in the universe there's honeymoon for us every time hallelujah <laughs> So I want to tell you, don't go to this place where you say I cannot enjoy my life anymore. Don't say you understand, boss. He's got some crazy stuff which is going to happen in life. Hallelujah. When people call, when people say it's crazy, come on, say it's too easy. Come on, say it like me. It's too easy for the Lord. Hallelujah. A third point for today. remind yourself of who god is every time you don't feel like believing remind yourself of who he is lord i don't think i can believe this lord but then i, I want to remind myself of who you are i don't think lord this is possible at all but i want to remind myself of who you are because god tells sara verse chapter 18 verse 30 and but he says lord then god is asking abram why did sara laugh is asking why did she say can a old woman like me have a baby and then the lord for the first time says is there anything too hard for the lord before jeremiah chapter 2 chapter 32 he says is there anything too hard for me i will return next year this time and she will have a son hallelujah this of this morning i want to ask you remind yourself see one thing you need to understand is god's omniscience omniscience means that he knows everything right a lot of times we don't believe because we think god does not know what we are going through or probably god does not know science god does not know how biology works god does not know how chemotherapy works how radiology works how cancer works god does not because cancer cannot be healed we all know this and we think god does not know boss god tells you i know everything right and he says i know everything about you that's scary no I know everything about you and then still he says is it too hard for me you need to trust god's omniscience right he knows what we've done and whenever god comes and gives a, a promise we is like lord you actually don't know what you have done he says boss even before you did it i know you were going to do it 
right that's what he tells peter peter or i will be there with you i will never run away lord i will stand for you he knows peter he will betray me thrice i know even before you do he's he's omniscient he knows everything after knowing all the facts about the world about you and me he still says i'm going to do this for you so whenever you go through unbelief you need to remind yourself lord was he knew even before you started all right god looks at jeremiah and says you know what even before you formed in your mother's womb i called you to be a prophet jeremiah says boss i'm young he says but i knew you were born ready already second you also need to understand god's omnipotence his power to do everything he can do all things come on say he can do all things say all things say all things no matter how impossible it is despite sarah's womb being dead job 42:2 says lord i know that you can do anything and no one can stop you right so whenever you feel like not believing at all you need to understand omniscience omnipotent he knows everything even after knowing everything he's telling me he can do this for me right so in your prayer don't go and explain god about everything you're going through lord how is this possible this cannot be done this cannot be right today morning also after first service one one girl came she had a knee replacement surgery so she was actually you know telling a testimony she said after the knee replacement surgery they told me that i cannot stand for 6 months it'll take it's going to take 6 months and she saying on one night prayer i was watching you were leading worship and i was worshiping along and i said pastor if you are leading worship and if god can heal me while i'm worshiping i decided i will stand up and worship and you know what happened pastor without the help of the clutches i stood there worshiping throughout the worship i stood there worshiping god and there god healed me i did not wait for 6 months to be healed god healed me instantly come on give it up guys if you want stronger knees clap better so my god can do everything even when people say it can't be done and the best part is he knows everything and he says it fourth the day for your testimony will surely come and your waiting will be over come on say it will surely come all right we've been reading testimonies now no 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 the people's prayer have changed they are like pastor in the next list i want my testimony all right your name also will come in the testimony list your day will come because that day comes genesis chapter 21 verse 1 and 2 the lord kept his word come on say the lord kept his word and did for sara exactly what he promised she became pregnant and gave birth to a son for abram in his old age this happened at just the time god had said it would that day came 24 years of wait all right 25 years they were waiting and you know every time it started with genesis chapter 12 from chapter 12 every time abraham is being met by god or the angel you will have a child you will have a child i'm 90 i'm 89 it started with this guy being 75 all right from 75 it went on to 90 then and then it went on to 99 now they are talking about 100 it's been on and on and on and on then you know what during this time probably abraham and sara or especially sara would have thought probably god is not there in their life right you need to understand from birth from conception to delivery the lord was controlling everything and probably these these people would have thought god's not in control because it was not happening as he predicted dear children of god i want to tell you when you think god is not in control i want to tell you he is fully in control of your life amen come on lift your hands and say he is fully in control because it did not happen at the time you expected they were like waiting for 25 years but then the day came they realized oh my god all along this guy was in control man he was holding my life together he was holding my husband my wife my child even before isaac was born he knew how how tall isaac would be what would be his complexion he was controlling everything that day came hallelujah now i want to tell you today this morning this testimony of yours is going to come very soon and god is in control of your life hallelujah even when you feel it's totally out of control because you know lot separated sodom and gomorrah happened hagar came in ishmael was born hagar was sent out all this was happening and probably sara thought it's all out of control man i want to encourage all the parents today all right 
the parents who are thinking that your child's life is out of control and they are like out of control beyond redemption look at me have a picture of me in your house that's why all our calendars have my picture whenever you feel that you know lord's not about to do something look at me and if you feel you know whenever these parents walk up to me and say pastor my my child my daughter my son has gone away from the lord out of control i tell them remember me all right i was an addict i was totally away from the lord if god could touch me and change me your child i won't even say will come back i'll say your child your child is still in god's radar not out of god's radar still in god's radar and you know then then people when I, when i tell them they don't understand what it is they go in detail it's like the non detail answer in english too they go in detail explaining all that their child does you know pastor you do actually don't know about my son and my daughter in fact i'll have to tell them you actually don't know about your pastor they go on with all details no she does that pastor you will not believe i tell them you will not believe <laughs> right they go on explaining all that you know they give me a list provision list of all that that's been happening and all that's been done and all that's about to happen and they have their own imaginations as well you know parents you have to be scared yeah i have to be scared if you're not scared you're not a parent so but then i tell them i tell them the lord is in control the lord is in control though it seems out of control the lord is still in control and that's what happened god was controlling everything and that day came i want to tell you for all the parents who are worried about your children a day will come you will also see your children on the stage here standing for the lord proclaiming the name of the lord being a testimony for the lord running for the lord being used by the lord magnificently <laughs> hallelujah aren't you glad you should be clapping more heavily for your children here i pity your children <laughs> he will have the final laugh in your life the child was born and they named him isaac 215 chapter 215 now even after the child is born the word again says abram was 100 years old when isaac was born i was like boss won't you leave this guy alone every time you keep talking about his age every time from the beginning abraham was 75 when he left haran then when this happened he was 89 when ismail was born this guy was 86 on and on and on and on you talk about it and finally isaac is born here i thought this even after isaac is isaac was born and they made him and they named him isaac abraham was 100 years old it's like somebody gives you a compliment but then there's a comment after it today morning after i finished the second service there was this one elderly couple who came to me and said pastor you know what nowadays your sermons are very good and you're energetic so i was like now is that a compliment or a comment what are you trying to sell my my previous sermons were in the good or didn't didn't i have the energy no 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 pastor so they leave you in confusion you have to pray about it and ask god for a revelation there are people you know but they come and they give you a comment they assuming that they giving you you are you're actually looking very young for your age have you heard this you're looking very young for your age and then there's this compliment of the mother daughter and uh, the a father son you know where they say you know is that your sister is that your you know brother all of this and they 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 feel they're complimenting and uh, i watched this video where you know one day the father goes to pick up this daughter and uh, all in, in the college and all the girls who are studying with the daughters looking at the father all right and this girl says lord i just pray that in my next life i need to have ugly parents <laughs> all right i wish my daughter prays the same <laughs> no jokes apart 100 years I was like lord why every time are you talking about the age again and again why are you every why every time mentioning because god is trying to tell us see every time this is something very impossible you need to understand his facts when you look at the world and you talk about the facts of the lord is saying boss look at these facts 
every time i am no i am i am bringing in quotation the age which means it was impossible it was impossible it was it cannot happen at all but i made it possible right i made it possible a day before yesterday i saw this uh, two sisters one sister had put out a posting about her sister's birthday and how good she is how great she is and all of that and she had mentioned it is her 40th birthday and i you know uh, i still can't imagine how quick you become 40 and all of that and i, I and i called up and go wish that girl so she, she is like pastor from every morning everybody is calling me and wishing me happy 40th happy 40th happy 40th sometimes we at times we think we are doing something good for others again now sara declares was 6 and 7 God has brought me laughter. Now look at this lady. The lady who laughed. Now she's saying, "My God is having the final laugh. He has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh with me. It's not mockingly, with joy. All who hear this about this will laugh with me." And she says, "Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Yet." I have given Abraham a son his old age, and then he named him Isaac. I want you guys to listen to the sentence. A day will come, you will be holding the same miracle, which you once thought was impossible. A day will come, you will be holding the same miracle, which you once thought was impossible. That day will surely come in your life. Hallelujah. This morning dear children of God I just want to encourage you. The day will surely come. It was God who made a laugh. People who did not believe when Sarah went and told call me Sarah princess when Abraham went and told me call me Abraham father of nations people would have laughed what is this fool man all Abraham's servants would have laughed this fool is calling making us call him Abraham father of nations. probably they would have not not laughed in front of him they would have gone back and laughed and there are people a lot of people who do this today in our lives they are like this fool made a mistake here this guy should have thought twice he should have thought i told her they laugh at our life probably at the back of us but i want to tell you there will be a time we will also say who would have thought this would have happened man and my god is having the final laughter in my life hallelujah sara gave birth to a son called him isaac Isaac had two sons called him Jacob and Esau. Jacob became the father of 12 sons which gave rise to 12 tribes of Israel. Israel after some centuries later gave birth to the savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want to tell you this legacy of blessings will continue in our life as well. Hallelujah. I want to tell you because of your faith God's about to bring in a season a new season into the life of all in your family. Hallelujah. You will hold that miracle which you once thought was impossible his promises never fail his promises are guaranteed 100% guaranteed because of his unlimited power omnipotent god his promises have great purpose and most importantly his promises are based on our faith your faith needs to activate the promise god has given amen can i hear a loud amen i just saw this picture an explanation about aben Amen A stands for agreeing with God M stands for moving with God E stands for what started with God with end will God and N starts for never doubt God whenever you say an amen you're agreeing with God you're moving along with God with the promise he will end it for you and most importantly i will never doubt God whenever i say an amen Hallelujah. Dear children of God, this morning I just want to encourage you. Don't allow what you understand to stop you from receiving what you don't understand. When people say it's crazy, come on, say it's too easy. If people come and say, "Boss, this is November, December. It's the year end. This cannot happen, boss. Too easy for my Lord." When people say this is not the right time, you say it's too easy for my Lord. When people say this is not the season, this is not the no, no, the the market is falling, there's inflation and all this crap. All you say is, boss, it's too easy for the Lord. My Lord will have the final laughter. Hallelujah in your life, in your children's life.